Move to approve the agenda as presented. Jim? Anyone have any peculiar interest? Report. No. Approval of minutes of the September 10th meeting. Motion, Brett. Thank you. Okay, delegation. Allen and Basil Rolls. Welcome. Hello, Basil. Hi. If, uh, the issue we have here is with a road access to a lot that we wish to purchase. And it's uh, known as McConnell Road right now. But McConnell Road only goes so far, but we found information that would prove some things right or wrong, I guess. This is a uh, deed from 1890. You saw that. You saw it? Mm -hmm. Okay. 1894. 1894. I believe. 1893. And it states that running now, we're going to lot Range D North, lot 65 and 66, which was surveyed as. Whole lots or ranges, I guess, in the beginning, which cut the concession off at lot 32. If the same thing happened at we call Davison's Corner, where the Wisconsin Lake Road comes out and the new found out road goes through. If the whole lot beyond goes away, that the concessions are cut off. Okay, so what's your ask, Basil? Well, we have here that between these two lots where we're looking for access. On this deed, it states that there is a prolongation of allowance for a road between the eight and nine concessions in front of lot six, or range D north 65 and 66. Okay, can we, do you mind Mr. Chair, if we get Bill Kennedy no, to no, weigh no, in on no, this? No. Yeah, I see that, I see what the problem with the range lots is that the settlers got there before the surveyors, right? Well, yeah, that's what we, I happened. The settlers got there before the surveyors and they stepped their area and the surveys come along, that's why the range lots are not the usual 100 acre lots. Oh, no, we know that, but yeah. why they, they, they must have known where stuff yeah. was because they cut the lots off on the concessions. Yeah. yeah. So they did cut them off. So the township had to be surveyed before the, yeah. they went through there. Yeah. Then we also have a, a deed from 1938 that says the same thing. We have another deed from 1954. Where the late Mr. Valley had resurveyed those lots. And it also says on there that there was an allowance for a prolongation of the road. Okay, so Bill. We know we oh. know that the Kennedy or the thing in the bill now. Uh, McConnell Road is, not, is 300 meters. Correct. But in 1984, the government at the time demanded that all townships put their roads into different categories. Mm -hmm. So what happened, I think there is when they did that, nobody else lived in behind. There was a person living on the first part there, the part McConnell Road went, but after that, nobody lived in it. Okay, so, but your your ask is that we <clears throat> open up this road? Well, is it open or is it not? It says, pro, this is over a hundred years now, right? Yeah. That like I said, it was a prolongated road. What you're saying is in a registered right of way, so you can have separate the, or buy the lots or use the lot. Right. Yeah. Or other people, then there's lots of people that landlocked in there now because of so what went on. It's all landlocked. Yeah. Now, when they made this deed in 18, 1894, they would have copied from the original deed. This was the first land transfer on those lots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think if we can find the original deed, it's going to say the same thing mm -hmm. because where would they have gotten it from? Yeah. So what I'm saying is when they give settlement to the people on what my dad and sister now own, they would have to give them access. So they just prolongated the road. Bill, now, it wasn't what's, your, what's your my no, what yes, your knowledge of this? I know what McConnell Road, Sandra has it yeah. pulled up on the map. So McConnell Road goes in to 
across the, the curve one lot and it stops right at the end of the lot. Where Basil uh, is talking about, he has to cross this lot to get this other lot to get to their property. There's right now, there's no, uh, we don't have any information that we own that. So it's not a, not part of the township road system. So what Basil is talking about to either needs access across that lot. And we have told them that that needs to be dealt with lawyers because we do not get caught in between property owners. Mm -hmm. But what Basil is, Basil, tell me if I'm, after I'm done here, if I'm wrong, okay? But what he's talking about is the concession comes out. If you see where the concession comes out and it stops. So where he's saying it was, is supposed to be prolongated. It should have went ahead through, but it didn't. So that's where McConnell Road comes in and hits that, and then they could go go in on that. Am I pretty well correct in what I just said? Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You, but then, why did they run McConnell Road on that private land? Why didn't they just run it up to the lot line? They already started down there. Tough to answer 120 years later. So what is there you're saying, basically? Is it a, it's on a lot line? Yeah, it's, it's the south part of the... This, this is talking about the south part of it, yeah. the, the, the line that's there right yeah, now. It's on, it's on the lot line. It's not just through the bush. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's on the no. lot line. And also then... Where they didn't extend the lot line. Well, what they did or didn't was, extend the, 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 the road allowance. No, like it's fence 66 feet wide. So yeah. that's right, right, right where the hand is, yeah. if that so was continued. Like, so this sounds like an easy fix. Why don't you just go to your lawyer and have them grant you get so, access? So right now, McConnell comes off the old piango. We stop maintenance of it right here. Okay. This is the lot that Basil and her. That's what that's my sister owns. Yeah, the, their that sister owns. They're also looking to purchase the spot back in here. So what he's talking about this prolongated is because this is the concession. It should have ran ahead through. Then McConnell Road would go on that. What we're saying is what Sandra and I have, have related to him is that the township road stops right here. This is a private matter between this landowner who doesn't want to let him cross that property and them. But this is the part where he's referring to that's prolongated, this concession that comes across here. Hopefully that was clear to everyone. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Okay. Is there any reason that you can see for stopping there? I mean, what I'm saying, is there any reason to make a perfect lot of you? I guess what, and just I just want to get off topic a little bit. What what has happened where I live is the concession comes down and then stops the Bonesher Lodge Road. It doesn't run to the lake because that lot 25 at the lake, we lost a bunch of land under the lake back in the 1800s. So they stopped. They didn't run the concession right through. So that actually half of our farm is a concession 11 rather than concession 10, but they stopped it there, left it attached. Now, is there anything there that could maybe cause something like that? That there's well, somebody lost land to the lake or something, and that's why they stopped it. No, but then down on, on New Found Out Road and on Thompson Lake Road, they yeah. pushed it through. They're running over. Can you take the map down? Uh, so, the, the next concession there. So, what you want to do a bit is go down a little more. I think we're find the Thompson Lake Road, wherever it is there. There's New Found Out there. So, there. Lake. Yeah. Those, those are. Or they, they, where that line comes down on the right, the concession ends there. I think it's there. Go a little more to this down to your. No, you see where it ends up there? Right at the top. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, see? now I see it. Yeah. So that whole road was pushed right through to continue. Oh, Constant Lake Road, you mean? Yeah. It was pushed through. Because all that's the way the Albiongo was surveyed. Well, because Constant Lake Road is a forest road, though, right? There's a Constant Lake Road. near the top. Okay, so do we have a solution for this? Uh, that's a good question. Like, the, and the new phone note really is the same thing. You can see where the concession starts the way up. So what? Just let me tie this up in a bow here. What you want is access to those two other lots without going over the other gentleman's land. Yeah, basically. Yeah, because we feel because this was a prolongated road, it was put in there for a reason. And that was access so the people could get in. And then they ran the road down 
to the Avion because it was closer than going through the next one and up to another big hit. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, I'm gonna direct this to Bill and Sandra. Is this not a survey issue? I would think it would be a legal issue. Cool. Yeah. Oh. Because well, you're, oh, you're right. you can't you can't survey something that you can't that Sandra and I have no way of proving that it's there. This prolongated road is a legal issue between that has to be stated by a lawyer. Uh, at least that's because we have we have no way of saying to us, we look at the map, the concession doesn't run run through. It's one lot too short. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so, so then okay, could I it. Basil and Ellen, could I, could we send you away to get a legal opinion and then come back to us on this? I I totally understand what you what you're saying now. It's all coming clear that you need access, but I would love to hear if you could speak to your lawyers and just ask what they think. Just because obviously there was we're working with pretty old documentation. So you can't, can't find the survey that, that shows the road. Well, we it's hard to find the original yeah, date. Yeah. But one of the we had a. Uh, Talk to a real estate agent about this, and he went. He said he went to Pembroke for another piece of property and looked for the uh, documents. It took him two hours. He found them, and he took them up to the front desk. And he said to the lady, "Would you please photocopy this for me?" Oh no, just take that. We'll get another copy. He said half the drawers are empty because they never replaced them. Oh my God! Well, that's not good. <laughs> so this is. I mean, how do you prove all this stuff when you can't? That's what I'm saying. Is is there a problem with you getting a legal opinion well, and bringing it back to us? Well, if if your lawyer looked into it, okay, because in the end, it's going to be your lawyer that says yes or no. So, is there something that we can save costs here? I and mean, suppose we reimburse you a little bit or something on your lawyer fees for this or what? Um. I'm not sure that this is a township problem at this time. It may become a township problem, but I'm not sure where we stand right now. If you're, I mean, you're trying to get into two lots. Do you own those lots, by the way? Oh, yeah. One. Well, my sister owns one. The, the one over with the part of McConnell in there? Yeah. And the problem is at the end of the concession, somebody else owns that. You're saying there's no right of way there, I guess. Well, we can have if we can find the original deed, it might be on the original deed saying it's it's a prolongated, right? Right. How Any suggestions, staff? Deed? That's you know. What do you guys think? Well, I think I think your idea of getting a legal opinion is because chances of them finding the original deed and like a needle in the haystack. But I thought that the registry office, once they went to electronic, that all those all those surveys were yeah. scanned. Yeah. It didn't happen, but it's on the like personally you, you don't go to Pembroke for anything, you find more in Aaron Pryor museum. <laughs> okay. Oh really? <laughs> oh yeah, other people found all these documents. The museum in Aaron It doesn't cost nothing. It doesn't cost you pain. And they sold a copy for you. But it doesn't cost you nothing. That's good of them. Look, Chad's <laughs> back there nodding his head. He's like, yep, I've been there. The trouble is, Dad owned that police property for 75 years. We have to get in there some way. Right, yeah. So it's, it's not a matter of uh, it's, new you're ba basically going to a lawyer and saying, hey, this is the way we went in, and he's going to say, you can continue going in there. Is the township going to allow me. that then? I, I'm not, well, we can't let you in over somebody's private property no. unless we can find the deed, but are you, oh, are you talking about the, the concession extent? kind of thing? Well, wouldn't it, Bill, would it not be a private again, road? Again, the, temp, the concession ends prior to, at the end of the lot. So in, before anything can be granted by the township, it has to be stated by a lawyer that the township owns that property to grant it. The road across uh, across the property to their lot from the end of McConnell Road, from what we're saying mm -hmm. is the end, that in turn would be between the two property owners to 
dispute them. And if, if you went to your lawyer and your lawyer said, well, yeah, you can go ahead and do that. Well, then obviously he knows the legal ups of it. Or but, being able to but what you're saying is if granted, then they could use this prolongated road. I'm using Basil's term. I'm no lawyer. Okay. But so you, a lawyer would have to tell, tell the town, tell the township. That they could, then we that they have access, them. that they're okay. able to grant, grant access to, to them to use them. And then Jack just said it. So then we would reclaim that road. Because yeah. if essence. you look at it right now, the property owner in question owns. According, looking at that, he owns that property yeah. because there's no. The, the, con the concession stops the lot yeah. before. Yeah, there's no survey going beyond that. No. But why? There's a couple spots to see on there. And also, and also we, we, from traveling that road for so many years, we would have the access to do it. He couldn't stop us. Right. So, technically. okay, so can we please send you away, get a little legal opinion, and we'll bring you back to the table. Okay. I think that's the easiest way for us to do this. We certainly don't want landlocked pieces of acreage that can be used and built on. Um, so I think that that's the best way that we can go about this, but obviously you're hearing like, we're open to what you're saying, but we need some information, some more information from you. Yes, sir. Is permission to speak? Uh, actually it's Merv's meeting, but okay. sure. <laughs> my, name, my name is Pat Pelican. I am the owner of the other property that. Oh, you're not part of this delegation? Well. No, I'm sorry, sir. You can't. I'm sorry. Terribly sorry, sir. Um, th that's something that we're going to have to, when we bring Basil and Alan back, certainly if you'd like to become a delegation, um, but we, we do have some rules about, about speaking. Sorry about that. I assumed you were with them. I am with them. <laughs> we're trying to buy his law. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Oh. The last three years on this. Okay. okay. Then that makes it a little different. Let them start. Yes, a little different. Yes. I I thought maybe you were the one stopping them. Absolutely. Sorry yes, about that, sir. Yeah. Um, I just like to add some background is if you went to that where it where it ends, you, you can actually see the old road going through there. And we traveled it for years on motorbikes and snowmobiles and everything. Like it, it's it's not something new. It's been there for years. That over the last fifteen or twenty years, as Bill knows, it hasn't been used that much. And now small trees are there, but you can still easily get through on a four wheeler or whatever like that. Okay. The other point I like to make, Mr. Mayor, is that it not only affects the these guys or myself, but all the other lot owners who this is their only access to get to those lots. Well, common sense is that it should have been there should be a survey showing that absolutely well yes. there's another thing though it said uh, half of this stuff was never put on beats yeah. they were just forced to build. Yeah. so how, how do these other property owners get there right now well right now as bill and everybody they're going across knows, we use a private road which has been used for probably 100 years but it goes across uh danny delicates and kevin delicates property to oh. gain access to my property to gain access to another lot of Donald Bellicates, which is farther back to who is now Rob Bellicate, he's a cousin of mine. They all accessed through another road, and that's why this this concession road never got used because there was a well traveled, you could travel with a Cadillac and drive in there. Because Danny and those guys have looked after it for so many years. Thank so you for the information. Oh, we really appreciate that. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, no, I, I should have that. Rules are rules. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, gentlemen. So, so if you so. can let Sandra know and we'll get you back on the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. you. Sorry yeah. about that. Okay. All of these messy old. I know, and what he said is correct. Some of these things were even on these. If you read some of the stories on the surveys in that area, they sent somebody back 
for food and he'd get drunk and be locked up and they'd have to go and get him. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but you know, we we've dealt with a whole bunch of these over the years yeah, that are just yeah. they're just messy. So anyway, I hope that we can rectify this. Eagle Mountain Community Development Group. Yes. Still on the roll here on the chair. I'll take the nice cushy one. That's what I do. <laughs> Brian used to be my chair. <laughs> no, Brian? Hey, little, for a little rental, I'll stand up. Yeah, I don't know. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if I could start this off, uh, first of all, I'd like to, on behalf of our group, uh, apologize to council for the rough road that I think that uh, we put you down on this uh, this project that we were trying to get through. Um, certainly uh, not the intention of this group to have that happen. Uh, we definitely, definitely want to work hand in hand with you people in the future going forward. Um, I know there's possibly been some changes to what's happening, and uh, but any other projects on uh, town property, definitely we want you people to be there from the start to the finish on it. And uh, no more button heads. We, we just want to go forward with this. And I, you know, I, I don't see any reason why we can't type of thing. And uh, like I said, uh, on behalf of all of us, uh, I think uh, you definitely need you know, an apology was yeah. definitely required in our end. And that, so. Thank you. That means yeah. a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Is it okay? Together. Absolutely. Okay. So um, just uh, we did have a session before this. Um, um, the shoreline has been uh, repurchased uh, by the gentleman Chad Patrick that bought the Creamery building on Friday. And so uh, we are going to remove the rock, the clean rock that's there. Mr. Patrick is going to purchase. He is paying us back the 10,000 that we originally put in. Um, obviously um, your debt has been cleaned up. Um, and so uh, Chad is going to resume a, a boardwalk project next year, obviously not this year. Um, and the, the one question, of course, that we would have is the people that did donate, um, would, do you want to continue on on the other side of the river with perhaps a walking trail, which I've been asked about for the last eight years, uh, and the fishing dock as well, which we all know would be lovely. I know um, Mr. Patrick uh, would prefer not to have fishing on the creamery side. Uh, it would be a, a public-private dock. Um, that are we will still utilize some of the uh, the um, Main Street Revitalization Fund to put up some benches, etc. We could do some of the same thing on the other side of the river if that's a project that you wanted to take on. Um, also, he is putting it on land just to <laughs> just to <laughs> yeah to land that claim. <laughs> so I but I'm so if thankful. I may, uh... And that, that's a great idea, and we will definitely take that back. We, we're we not uh, the authority here for the group. We are just a committee, a, a subcommittee of, of our group. Uh, and the fishing dock, we would love to go ahead. But again, we have to go back to the drawing board, and, and we have guys like Paul Kilby and, and who know what's going on. But that will definitely be worked with, with this council. Uh, if I might add, from what Dave was saying, we also have to rebuild the trust between our two groups, uh, like we had the first couple of years. Uh, and just so so this council understands what we used to do for HST, which the township gets about 80% refunded. Mm -hmm. The township paid the bills on our behalf, but they wouldn't pay them unless the treasurer of our group's signature was on that document. Okay. And when Connie sent us a bill, it was paid. Okay, so we want to develop that trust again with council. We're not we're not here to let the taxpayer foot the bill. We want to pay our way and be an asset to this community, and that's that's on a positive note. I really okay. appreciate that. And, and, and I hope you guys realize too, we were never against 
any project. I, I was never. I'll, I'll speak on behalf of myself. We, we, we just wanted to make sure that things Number were done. Okay. And, and and I know some people, uh, you know, 20 years ago, and I've, I've talked with other members of the community. 20 years ago, you could do things and it wasn't that big a deal. But today with geotech studies and engineering and all that stuff liability. has to be liability. Nobody sued anybody 25 years ago, guys. You know, and today that's a big thing. And that's a, it's it's my job to put that sober second guess to some of the stuff. And when I've seen a few things that were done out of place, it, it led to a further investigation. And, you know, I, I don't want to come across as being hard to anybody, but we pretty well have to. You but have I, to be. You, absolutely, you know, and but, I really want to work with this group, right? So, but you have to appreciate sure. Tim's comments because I think that in the public, in the fray, um, it, it appeared that we were against this project. We were never against it. And that was really, really hurtful to read on social media um, that we were putting a stop to this when all we were trying to do was make sure that it was safe and built properly so that it would be there for the next hundred years. And I, I hope I hope that us coming back together as council and the community group that we can we can show the public that we really do want to work together for the betterment of, of our township. I mean I just I just had a phone call this morning. Uh, a gentleman from North Algona Wilberforce on Gristmill just raving about McRae Park. He just thinks it's the best thing ever. In fact, his his suggestion was that when we're redoing Gristmill, could we make it wider? Because so many people are walking and walking their dogs and enjoying that facility. And I, I just, I think that that shows um, when we work together, we really can make amazing things happen. Things that the taxpayers just cannot afford to pay for. The unfortunate thing is you people weren't involved right from the start of the project, which that's not what we want to do from here on in. Going forward, we want you to be before anything is done anywhere, that definitely you have your say in it and that we can work together on this. Uh, I mean, that's a, that's a must because it's your property, it's your liability. Mm -hmm. and by all means, I would be on the same side as you guys were. Uh, I mean, your engineers say to do this, you pretty well have to go by what they say. You know? And just so I can address that, thank you for bringing that up, Dave. Um, so we had the peer review done. It said to remove the rock and the helical piles. Got it right again, Bill. Had the engineers speak to each other. Again, our, our engineers said, this must be removed. Council gave me the latitude to meet with our engineers personally at a conference the day after our last council meeting. I met with them that night, actually, at nine o'clock, and then again in the morning to get the, their, the uh, person that was here, the engineer that was here, he had to be consulted. They said, absolutely, that rock needs to come out. There is no doubt. So um, I'm, I'm really, I'm so glad to hear um, that, that you guys are in agreement. Um, it did also come to light that the amount of six inch minus, I always have to get that right. The amount that we were told was put in there was about a third of what was put in there, which is even more concerning at this point. So at this moment, we are waiting for MNRF to grant us the work permit. Uh, we do have to be out of the river by Monday. And so, um, oh, Tuesday, sorry. Right, the first. Yeah. So um, we're trying to make this happen this afternoon um, so that um, we're good to go for next year and Mr. Patrick's good to go for next year and we can all move forward in a positive manner. Yeah, just before we leave this, I sh since I was the number one target, I think I should just say that right from the get-go, my point of view was <clears throat> I was in favor of the boardwalk long as it was done correctly. And as we gone through our the last couple of months we realized there's been quite a few errors that were done and um, even if I was to take the blame like I took the brunt of a lot of it I still think the proper thing to do is make this boardwalk something that is <clears throat> we can be proud of and that it becomes an asset not a liability so whatever mudslinging was done with mudslinging the, the proper thing is I was elected to do a job and 
that's what I'm going to do is do a job. And as long as it's done properly, like you guys doing whatever, consult the engineering, get the engineering blessing and away we go. And that's what, you know, that's what I'm here for. Just a blessing. So we know it's done properly. Yeah. And I, aside from the rock, I support the project. The only thing I didn't want to see happen is two or three years down the road, King, uh, future council has to spend thousands to fix up what, what it doesn't, wasn't done right. And that was my concern was going in the river and what, what what's in the future. And I didn't want to put a burden on future councils. Well, it's not only the council, but it's the taxpayer. Taxpayer, yes. It's yeah. supposed to be an asset for this community, <laughs> not a liability. So that's, that's where we're coming from. Well, and I think that's why we're excited about this public-private partnership. Um, you know, Merv said all along, the person, if anybody ever buys that building, they're going to want their waterfront. So I think that in the end, I'm excited to see what other projects you guys will do, but I think in the end, this benefits everybody. I think it's a, it's a good thing. And again, I've been asked on several occasions about a walking trail on the other side, so Maybe something to consider. Certainly, yes, we'll take that back. Um, I did see when I talked about uh, possible urban stand. Okay, yes. Uh, so up to this point in time, is there any liability or negotiation we have to do with council for any costs, uh, or or you have to see where? Well, okay. So we do have the ninety six hundred dollars of yes. wrong rock. Um, which Brent said that he would fundraise for, and I pledged five thousand because, quite frankly, I thought if I pledge five thousand, I'd like my name on it as well, right? As one of the sponsors. Um, so there, there is uh, that money outstanding for Rock. Um, outside of that, I don't think there's anything else. Well, I think I, the, I really, I really think the point of the meeting today is just to really come out with a more of a positive message. I know, like for the last since we've been elected, it's been a lot of like negative tension between, say, the like the group and council and this and that. I think uh, we're starting at ground zero for the project, right? Yeah. So I think, uh, especially for the taxpayer, I mean, the the thing is that the people are donating are the taxpayer. So the thing is, is what we really, really want to do is like I really want to see a fishing dock built. Like, I think it'd be fantastic in the community. The amount of people that come and uh, fish, just like we're say where uh, the creamery on the back is, but right. most importantly, on the other side, we already have I the see them every day, Brent. Oh, it's fantastic. I live right there. So and it's fantastic. Yeah. And, and uh, we do have possible full funding for the fishing dock already. Yeah. Very nice. Yes, Great. the Rotary Club is stepping up to the plate again. We just have to come up with a, a Plan. plan first, okay, <laughs> and approve with the council, and and uh, and the funding I believe is there. So, so, uh, so if you're going to do something like that, it's uh, they came in and give you some options or whatever you want to use for. Yes, like if you come up with a plan, it's just a simple matter of of calling. You have the peer review to say would this type of plan work? Yeah, before you waste too much time and effort. Absolutely. All it is yeah. is one phone call, right? Absolutely. And then you can run with it right there and then give them the drawings yeah. and away you go. You know? And that's why we made sure this guy was on our yeah. committee. I said one uh, thing, Jack. Um, we're looking at the uh, dock down at the uh, arena. Uh, they're built on cribs, yep. the cribs. I think that's kind of mm -hmm. a good idea to look at. And then the elevation of that dock um, is perfect. So we can shoot that elevation transfer over to the fishing dock. Mm -hmm. and, and we're also looking, uh, as you know, Water Street is starting to erode. The, the bank mm -hmm. is eroding there, so maybe there's something, again, our group and township can work on with some better rock to protect mm -hmm. Water Street, okay, and the road. Uh, and parking. And it's parking. Crazy. So we don't get in the same thing we, well, you were on council at the time, but Lake Clear Road. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we, done, we, yeah. yeah. We put in a lot of rocks there. there. There's about so, 15 feet of yeah. The other thing, guys, I think we should bear in mind, if you, before you start working in the river there, we let Jack, let, 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 yeah. or stir up any silt, let Jack we know. We don't, so we don't stir up anything. shut down the generator yeah. station yeah. 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 We don't stir. First of all, nothing will be done. The you people are very, very aware of it. It has to be done. Absolutely. It's it's your property. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not ours. I mean, yes, we're all taxpayers, but definitely, you know, it's your responsibility. So we have to bring it forward first. Thank you, gentlemen.
Thank you. Thank you Let's very much. Thank you very enough. much for your patience. I, I, Jack, appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, oh, Brent, appreciate all it. your work. Yeah, yeah perfect. Thanks, guys. Thank you. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think maybe I was, well, maybe I was two years old. Let's go with Jack. Yeah, Jack. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Excellent. Brian, thanks for coming. Excellent. Thank you. I'll see you guys next Wednesday, and I'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. We take two minutes. Yep. Oh, we're starting now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
What are we going to talk about first? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with uh, Dana's report first. Just a yeah. Couple of items there. I guess the uh, the one that comes to the front is the uh, putting the the pins uh, and the stickers around. Yeah, yeah, the yarn yes, bombing. Yeah. I'm just trying to find it out here, but I know it's exactly where I read it. Yeah. Oh, it's yarn bombing. <laughs> yarn bombing. I thought it was yarn bombing. I'm going to donate some yarn. They're just making them, and they want to put it on the big rock, if I recall. Just kind of. Yeah, yeah there was I mean, some trees. And, yeah. So I'm not sure what the inputs. Uh, I don't really want it on the big rock because we're getting a plaque for that. But I don't have any problem with trees. How I didn't long, know how, that we had a Yarnia club. How long is it staying on for? Like, is it like a day or a couple days or, or like a week? Or? I'm not sure. I'm not. Uh, or will they take it up, clean it up? After? Well, Dana's sitting right there. Let's yeah. ask her. I don't know. <laughs> like, like I probably wouldn't have a problem with the big rock if it was only there for like it was like a, just a big splash kind mm -hmm. of event, like a one or two days. But if it's gonna be there like a month, I don't really see the longevity of it sustaining. I feel like yeah. it's just gonna be everywhere. Yeah, they're okay with the trees. Trees? Yeah. Sure. Stay with the tree. Go for it. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Why not? What's the Yarnia Club? It's a, it's a knitting club after lunch. Oh, at the library. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. And I guess I head down to the development uh, youth dances. Uh, Dana's already received. Uh, at least three confirmed sponsors for the, the dances and one pending. So these dances are, are covered so far. And then the, the, the more Dana's report is the uh, planning and zoning reports. I had a very um, unusual email from a resident of Foymount that thought that we were saying that it that the uh, medical cannabis facility could not go and find out, and that's not what we were saying. Um, and I assured her that if since they have to rezone, uh, we will certainly have a public meeting, and we'll make sure that all the residents up there know about it. Correct, Dana? It would have to go through a rezoning process. So, yeah. it made it mm -hmm. but, but so basically, the whole hamlet would be covered well, by notices. It would the advertisement. Would but the abetting landowners within 120 meters of the property would use the notice. And, okay. and that's not for medical marijuana. For medical mar marijuana, you don't have to use it. Yes, you do. He's stepping outside of medical marijuana. Okay, well, I was at a plenary oh, yeah? at OEMC. Okay. Zoning, building code, fire code. <clears throat> I'll do that in my county update. Okay, well, that's interesting. Mm hmm Okay, continuing on uh, on on Dana's report, uh, one item was the, uh, the pickle ball of the uh, public school we have, and uh, uh, the school board is is charging. So that in turn we have to charge participants. So I don't understand that. We pay for our schools in our property taxes. It's actually the provincial education rate. I don't understand why we then have to pay again when we're partner, partnering in those schools. Like the only person that has children in school right now is Tim. So the rest of us are paying our $323 a year. I, I don't understand that logic at all. Have we, have we asked the school? I, I think that's an ask guys. I think that's probably, I mean, it's only, I think two bucks, but Probably for janitorial services or something. That's what I'm thinking it is. Such right? janitorial services. But the kids are using the schools in the evening. There would be additional cleaners. cleaners. Now they're bringing in cleaners. I think it's the cleaning and the opening and closing. Just on a side note, in North Carolina, if you have no kids in school, you don't pay school tax. Really? Really. Initiated here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I found it out on the bus on my way to the I fair. Okay. 
Uh, okay, we'll uh, I'll ask check into that. Uh, yeah. But I think that's the progenitor, so I think we'll I, roll from roll from whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, the roll outside of that, I think that the Dana's report is uh, any questions. Okay, we'll go on to the recreation report. Do you have one? Uh, arena was uh, our first Saturday with a full, full day of ice time. Uh, everything went well, so we're, uh, we're happy. Uh, we're getting lots of sponsors for the public skating. Uh, and we have held our first one on Sunday, and we had 25 people come out, but it was a pretty nice day on Sunday. So I was going to say, yeah. it's hard to get people out when it's 28 degrees and sunny. You see, we're doing some uh, different purchasing this year for the yeah. canteen. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you see, we can bring that margin closer. Uh, we have more sponsors on the uh, on the rink boards. And the Olympia. And the, yeah, the Olympia is in work in progress. We're still trying to find a decal that's going to. How uh, how many remaining spots do we have available for sponsorship on the boards and on uh, the Olympia? The uh, Olympia will be full. Okay. And the boards, we have to do a bit of moving, probably about two more, three more spaces. It may not be necessarily uh, a full space, maybe only four feet, okay. but we'd have to do some adjusting. Okay. Is there any automotive? Automotive, no. Uh, on the boards? No. We, there's room up on the, on the, uh, Route, like on this above the beat the features and that on the far side, pair of benches, okay. the space is there if we could put in there. Okay, so I mean, as Murphy's Auto, we we don't want to over sponsor <laughs> if there are businesses here, but if there aren't, then we would probably do a board cap. Okay, if you just want to exhaust you know the people that actually operate here in the in the township. Okay. Uh, our Christian party, December the 7th. Got it. Got it. Uh, We're talking Christmas already. I know. Be on me, bring your own box. So sad. Mm -hmm. okay. It is. It is. Noise has been removed. Yeah. They clear. What, what exactly did the vandalism and uh, what did they do? Where in the uh, center park? What they did was, uh, I'm not sure what they took, but the uh, the gold on the monument, they uh, hit it with a sharp object and it took a chunk out of it. It's disgraceful. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Considering what it's there for, yeah. it's disgraceful. Uh, there are like, you know, the old appeals aware of the ongoing investigation, so, and, we never, never can tell. Was done. No, no, no. Um, can we go back to Slash Pad yeah, and the good. and the email from ABC? Yeah. I think that those were a couple of very intriguing ideas. Obviously, the um, the recirculation system that seems like an awful lot of work. Like having to, you forget that because we use treated water. The recirculation would have to be checked every day, like a like a swimming pool. Like drinking um, water. What's that? Just like drinking water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that um, the ideas that they had were two very good ideas. The picture, the pictures I have there right now, give you just to give you an idea of what's. Um, yep. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Stuff yeah. Out there, we've seen that. In okay. Yeah. Yep. So. Uh, Right now, every uh, unit outside can be adjusted. So there's a few options that we can we can do. We can shorten the time on it. Yep. Uh, shorten our hours, and we can turn the flow down somewhat. And the the gentleman we got the report from is the things are operating now at the most efficient. So if we turn something down too much, it's not going to be effective. But we can tweak some other ones. Let's try it. Well, I think uh, reducing the timing on it. Because what's the timing set right now? Right, right now, it's 
four minutes. Yeah. So oh, like, that's long. So like what, what what I was thinking, like I know from my experience being there, I think a lot of, as I said, the last meeting, I think the kids really like just pressing the button. In all seriousness, I would my recommendation would just bring it down to almost a minute, and then they can just keep going and pressing in this and that. And then that that really reduces significantly. And then we don't have to worry about say when someone's leaving, they press the button, and it's on continuously, and so that happens twenty times a day, right? Significant amount. So now, well, we can we like we'll be shutting it down maybe this week or next week, and before the shutdown, we can uh, turn the dials and we'll see what at a minute to see what we can do, and then we'll at least we'll have some back like some figures for. What would savings are at the end of the day? Okay. Uh, I I didn't realize it was four minutes, but that seems yeah. like a very long period of time. Yeah. That's four minutes for each device, then, or just no, no. I, just like per when device. we do a, we go up and do a, a task every morning. We activate it, and it runs for four minutes to do just to do a complete cycle, and then it shuts off. So when they push the button, it does a complete cycle. So everything. Sprays water in there. At different intervals. Like one will go on for 30, 40 seconds, and the other one will kick in and it just keeps. How many, how many intervals is it? Is there three? Like, is it three phase two? or? Uh, I, I think, I do believe it's a three phase, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Yeah, it's almost you could run like a 30 second cycle once, like through it, and then like a minute and a half then. And then I'm just curious how that'll lead into next year. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I, that's why I would say it's an easy, it's cost effective, and it'll reduce it. I think significantly. But. Yeah. That for sure, we can try those options and, and yeah. see, see at the end of the day. But, I uh, I really appreciated the options. Mm -hmm. Can Can I ask the gallery to not talk back and forth? It's extremely distracting. Okay. Anything else? There? So I think other than that, I uh, that's pretty much the my report. Uh, oh, I'm not sure. I'm sharing it. Yeah. Should, we, should we talk a bit about the letter regarding the dog park? That the oh, what when Kevin's still here? Yes, and I think uh, Steve might have had a hand in this as well. I'm sorry. Did who were you speaking to, Chad? Or uh, Branch? So I was, that was with that was with Steve, and Steve had spoken with Bill about it. Oh. So, it'd be, so, so I was going to bring that up when Steve's here. Okay. So. Okay. In my report. Okay, sure. Any, if you have any questions. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Steve. Steve. You're on the hot seat. Go on down, Steve. Um, Mr. Chair, I think perhaps we need to go into a closed meeting for an identifiable individual with Steve. Okay, well, can we do that first or we do Steve's report? Uh, I think we should probably do it first. Okay. Okay. Motion to go to close. Right. Yeah. We shan't be long, people. <coughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Kevin, I didn't see you there. Oh, you, were, you were hiding behind him. <laughs> oh, just a minute. I got to stop. Thanks, right, sir.
Video's on, Steve. Yeah. Video's We're on. on. Um, they seem to have disappeared. They all went outside. Oh. All of them? <coughs> no. This, this group, like the clapping group is back. <laughs> <laughs> we love you guys. <laughs> Applause is always welcome for you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> It really it motivates is. Tim every morning. Oh, <laughs> it's not in here. That's, what, that's what gets yeah. Tim out of bed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That in the wife's lunches. So. Oh, yeah. It's always a surprise. Yeah. I can't believe like that. Steve? Oh, I'm going to look after. No, seriously. I am. I'd be like, make your own lunch, you adult. You can't say that because she's going to watch this, or she probably oh, is, is right now. On? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> no, no, you can't. You can't. Oh, no, no, he's no. a grown boy. Can't be swaying anybody over the, over the internet here. Okay. He's a grown All boy. All in favor of Tim making his own lunches. Oh. Yeah, not, <laughs> he's a grown boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tim, Tim, just so you know, oh, I, I voted against Oh, now we're going to have to. Oh, no, thanks, oh, Brett. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Brett. Now we're going to have to remove all the internet services from my house. Because because of this ever happening again. Back, so. to, back to dial up. Back to dial up. That's all, exactly. Yeah. Buffering. Yeah. Buffering. Yeah. Anyway. I'm gonna give it another try. There you go. Um item number one, uh, we can scratch it. That has been resolved. The property standards issue. Mm -hmm. I guess just mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is resolved. Okay. So, uh, action item. Uh, so, uh, as uh, as we said, uh, we have to repass the smoking bylaw. Uh, what happens is, uh, just for your own information, for those that haven't dealt with a whole bunch of bylaw stuff, is uh, we write, uh, you know, uh, we write the bylaw, we pass the bylaw, it goes off to Toronto for ratification. Uh, sometimes they don't like the wording we've used. Uh, they send it back. We have to repass the bylaw, and, and then it's ratified by Toronto, which is the case. And it was a case uh, in this in this instance. It was uh, a, a case of uh, in one section I wrote the person, and they wanted it to read that person. So sometimes it's just as simple as that. But they are the Crown Law Office in Toronto, and they don't know much better than that. So uh, if it's on your agenda for later, just to repass the bylaw, Sandra's already mm -hmm. renumbered it. Yep. Uh, there are no other changes to the bylaw whatsoever. Nothing there, nothing there. Um, under information items, uh, those eight nuisance dogs have now all been placed and, and they're, they're all gone. We only have uh, one dog left at the, uh, at the shelter and it is a King Shepherd and he is a beast. I hope Dave Murphy is not watching this feed. I'm sorry? <laughs> You want them to you know, drop them off at your home? You know, all, all in favor? Ah, payback. It's kind of it is kind of humorous because with uh, with my my leg injury that I suffered, uh, which is still not healed, I can't walk them because I have no strength in that in my leg. So uh, I have my employee who is only like that tall, as you know. And, and she is actually, and the dog is she walking. takes it for a drag every once in a while. <laughs> the dog is walking the employee. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's Jack, you need a new dog. So does Dave. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. He really does not. Oh, we have the Christmas yeah. party coming up. We'll draw a and then we can send it to Dave. <laughs> we will. We're We're right. Forward it to Dave. Forward it to Dave, it. absolutely. <laughs> no. yeah. uh, the first eight CPR courses, if any members of council want to uh, want to attend, uh, the two days are going to be the 16th and the 30th of October. That's full day course, first uh, first aid. Uh, you are, you just need to tell me which one you want to go on uh, deck mm -hmm. because of generations he has to have it. Mm -hmm. So, but it, it's open. Any members of council that wish to. What date is this again? Uh, the 16th and the 30th. Oh. So they're both Wednesdays. Oh, what? Yeah, and if you want to go on, just let me know. 16th of October. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I have committee at. County the 16th and County Council on the 30th. There you go. Two time loser. What time? I, it's all day. Uh, from starting nine, at 8 a.m. 9 to 4. Uh, we're using an internal resource, which is actually, uh, which is actually quite nice. Uh, Kevin Martin is going to uh, be the instructor. Um, and how Kevin is doing it, we, we've agreed on a price per student. 
that money and he's going to be working for actually his normal wage and the money we make the profit or whatever you want to call it off the course is going into the firefighters fund okay. or whatever they call that as long as they don't have to get down my knees on the floor and work on the chest and uh we'll make sure that we have, uh, have one that stands up <laughs> or we'll put her on a table for you yeah actually you should ask kevin to bring the mechanical one uh, he's bringing all of this stuff okay right? yeah because we have a we have one that you you don't pump the machine pumps it's very interesting it's, it's and it I, does a proper job oh the new one yeah yeah <laughs> i understand there's a different method than when i was taught 20 years ago oh mer they keep changing it yeah we used because, to breathe then we didn't breathe then we yeah. breathe then we didn't breathe because back in march i listened to them i was in emergency in barry's van i listened to them work on somebody and they weren't doing the count that we were taught to do Oh, different count as well. Yeah. yeah, this this machine actually does it itself. Mm -hmm. um, emergency management. The training date is the 25th of October uh, from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, lunch is not being provided because Sandra wouldn't let me. Good for you. That's perfect. He should be providing it out of his budget. So what's the I was going to say. And uh, what, uh, what it is... Uh, I believe you already have IMS 100, so you're exempt, uh, and the fire chief is exempt. Am I uh, okay? I'm exempt. Uh, sorry, unless you've had IMS 100, Incident Management System. Uh, so it's a it's half day training. Uh, Doug Buckwall from uh, North Aurora Local Force is going to be the the facilitator for that, <coughs> and, and that will be in here. Uh, and if Sandra lets me, uh, I will get some cookies for uh, for the for snack time. Cookies are okay. Cookies are okay. There you go. We got that. And then the exercise itself is going to be a uh, tabletop exercise, uh, and it's going to be here again, and that will be on the 29th of November uh, from 1 to 4 p.m. Good. After deer season. It's after deer season. That's what counts. Yep. And they're both Friday afternoon, uh, and that was uh, uh, at, the request of, uh, at the request of one of the counselors. That Friday afternoon worked best for them. So, and, and I've got a, a great exercise ready. It's going to be uh, it's going to be quite interesting this year. Tabletops are never real interesting, but it will be interesting. Will there be prizes? <coughs> will there be fries? Prizes. Oh yes, there will be prizes. <laughs> Make it there interesting. Will we'll have prizes. You know? I feel like uh, you really don't need exercise <laughs> training after this year like i feel like from april 18th to june 3rd i was in an emergency <laughs> yeah, team on. team builder there it too. is a team builder so, yeah, if the township of bonisher valley had uh, declared an, an emergency or a partial emergency we'd be exempt oh really interesting so okay. remember that next year we'll, we'll come up with something like that grass is too short it's an emergency or whatever so, um good military about turn down to the football uh, second last and i will be uh we should have discussed this a few minutes ago but we didn't um i am on the conference call on thursday um uh, reference a uh, legal matter that we're involved in um and that's all I can say at this point. I will send you an email just looking for any input that, that you may have. Okay. It was one that Brian was working on before he left. Okay. And then Sandra knows nothing about it. So guess who gets to step up? I like the delegation. John. No, no, it wasn't. No, it was like. Uh, and last but not least, uh, and this is something just to start thinking of for next month. And I spoke to the, uh, spoke to Sandra this morning um i am putting together a complete report for next month uh, on the shelter uh, because we have to stop the hemorrhaging uh we are running in the red just or the last couple of years uh yeah. so i'm going to do a complete report for council for discussion uh, at the council <laughs> level next month on uh, on options and what we can do moving forward uh, because uh, the residents of the Township of Bonisher Valley should not be uh, responsible for the, you know, we're not in this alone. So Agreed. 
-hmm. Yes, definitely. A forward part would be wonderful, Steve. Thank you. Yep. And I want to get this done before uh, not only us, but all our partners uh, start looking Go. at uh, budgets for 2020. Mm -hmm. That's it for my report. Right. Dog park. For the dog, dog park, park there, Steve. Oh, for the dog park. Dog park. I thought, I, when it said dog park, I thought that was basically your run, but it's not. It's no. Uh, so we, we have had a number of, of uh, queries over the last few months, and, and uh, um, as Councillor Brent's been sort of getting them. Um, I spoke with Kevin, um, and we, we looked around the village for places we could actually put a decent sized park. Um, we had thought originally up at uh, Legion Field on that one side that's unused, but our big concern was there that uh, that those people that live along a uh, Foymount Road right there, mm -hmm. and they'd be listening to Barky and everything else, and, and that would just create another problem. Right. Uh, so uh, I spoke to Daryl, and uh, if you want to just sort of... Uh, yeah, we have it. Oh, okay. We know. Uh, yep. So that is the, the next best thing. Uh, how, it's large not, is, how large area is that? It's, it's not huge. It's going to be about uh, 100 meter or about 100 feet wide by about 300 feet long which is not a huge area uh, i had originally had it a lot longer uh, but then as bill pointed out we went out there uh, i was cutting off the geo trail so so that would be one of my concerns are we worried about it being the entrance to the geo trail uh, the other thing right up to the other question i had was who is going to maintain this dog park it would be the responsibility uh, of the pound and so the township. Yeah. Well, the township, of course. Yeah. I thought the pound was already hammered. But I know. But, that's, but they this talked, is why I was asking. They talked on their information. They referenced Hamilton, and they talked about two acres. Well, this isn't two acres, but that's beside the point. But the interest people on the former committee that's interested in this dog park and maintain it. That was so, going to be my suggestion. So my that's, that's what my, my question is. We have right now. We have twelve. Well, sorry. There's more than 12. There's roughly about 16 volunteers that really want to see the dog park move forward. A lot of them do live close. A lot of them really want to have a dog park that they can access in town. So, and I know they're willing to fu help fundraise for this as well, not like for the material and everything for it. Um, and that's kind of like the conversation, like out of this. So can I, how, what do we want or how can I approach the volunteer group that wants to really drive this project forward? Is the township willing to, maybe give a bit of man hour time to help like to build it next year. Um, and then they'll fundraise for their, like the material uh, and whatever amount, but that's what I think. Like, is this a project that the township wants to do for the works department? Um, well, one thing I just don't want to see is in a couple of years time when the novelty wears off that our volunteers disappear and then we have to maintain the dog park as well. I don't. And my, so my, this is, this was my train of thought asking about the geo trail and then about maintenance is that geo trail is a tourist attraction people really use it and i would hate to see that a dog park going right next to it and not be beautifully maintained right all pooper scooper yeah. uh lawn mode all of that that's my concern just for that location well is the thing horrible? is it looks like oh yes well, after, uh, so, so Bill and I and Kevin and I sort of went through, uh, and if you look at the preliminary budget that mm -hmm. they sort of made up, uh, you'll notice that at the very top, uh, there's some pre pre uh, site prep work that needs to be done, uh, and that is just to smooth it out and, and have a nice grassed area. But the volunteer list that Brent showed us, they were all in favor of Legion Field, right? I and mean, you just don't think it's a good idea to put it up there? Uh, I would really be concerned about the residents that are in behind. Yeah. Because uh, you know, you're in their it's backyard. A, it's a wonderful spot. It's right there by the by you know by all the other recreation stuff. Uh, but I, that would be my concern. I would be the residents along Point Mount Road. And you don't have any other site ideas? Um, we have not been able to find one. Uh, you know, we could we could put it out uh, at Spring Creek. I got lots of room out behind the pallet, but do residents want to drive out there? Uh, yeah, I was I was more thinking. I think that area is not bad because we do have like where we, 
like the RVs drop all their like septic and stuff off now. And then we also have McCrace Park there as well. So it's, in my opinion, it's pretty good. It's not really a populated area and everything. Like yeah. I think at most spots, I think it's it's quiet enough that we won't get really complaints from residents that live around it because no one really does except on the up, up the hill. But well, and uh, across the river. Yeah, and and across the river on the other side. Yeah. So I'm not against this project at all. In fact, it's been asked for for years and years, long before me, right, Merv? Yes. Um, but I think, and, and if the volunteer group wants to fundraise and figure out how to do this, I'm not against it, but my, I really, I, I'm loath to that location. I think that location is better than Legion Field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I it may not be perfect, but it's better than Legion Field. Yeah. I wouldn't, really, I personally, yeah, I don't think uh, Legion Fields would be the appropriate spot for it. I think this one, it's out of the way. It's over by the Crace Park. Where have the, like the RV station there now. I think it's, I think it's a pretty good spot. It's accessible too. Now the only other piece of property that is big enough, but would also require a bunch of prep work, uh, is owned by Eganville Generations, which is just, just, uh, just east of the, uh, just east of the geo. Uh, you know, it's down. You know, where the snow park is, so it's east of that. But that is the, it, it's owned by Eganville Generations. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's all you're river. talking. That's along the river. Yeah, you're I'm talking sorry. across from the Cray Park. Almost. I'm sorry. Across yeah, across the from the Cray Park. Across yeah. the river from the Cray Park. Yeah. How another across the river from the Cray Park. Park. Across yeah, yeah. this side. Oh, so where yeah, you turn on the bridge, you go straight. Yeah, so McCray oh, Park yeah. is on the left, and then across the river on on the other side of the river from us right now is is belongs to Eagleville Generation. That was all bought in case of a fit program. Both sides. Yeah, <laughs> that dream guide. Yes. But that's where that was. Uh, that's do why do you want there. me to maybe approach the volunteer yes. group and then see if they're if they think for the dog owners in the area if uh, like if they think that it is a good spot to the one that we like recommended or Steve recommended, which was over by the septic tanks, pretty much or the septage. I like the idea of EGC that land better. At least it's away from the lip of the geo trail. And we're never getting another fit. That land's got a lot of brush on it, doesn't it? It's not, it's not a little bit of prep work, but it's, prep work. it's not, not a lot of prep work with, uh, if you don't want to brush off or like Bill's equipment and stuff. It's not overly big material, so. Yeah, if only we knew anyone that would have like a chainsaw and knew like about cutting trees and yeah. stuff. If, if only we knew someone like that, eh? I don't know. Not it. So okay, thinking, um, can we bring this back to the table, please? Can you please speak to the um, the, uh, the, the volunteer group? Mm -hmm. and uh, it happened to get a hold of me because there are a couple of things. Like if the volunteer group wants to form, uh, you know, they'll have to open up their own bank account for fundraising because uh, as we found out, we can't fundraise inside the township. The other thing you're going to have to concern yourself, Steve, is if you go here, there's going to be certain days when they change the, the stuff, you're going to have a distinctive smell and odor, odor there, right? Because you're right beside that, where they change it to <coughs> bag. Yeah, and, okay. I don't think the dogs will complain. No, the people are going to complain, though. Yeah. So I'm going to have to let the dogs, you know what I mean? Well, and we, we based this whole <coughs> the whole construction on what they've got in Renfrew. Uh, Bill and I went down and looked at what they did in Renfrew, and it's been there for like four years, and it's still nice and solid. Uh, and that's a whole lot less expensive way to do it than, than chain link. And, yeah. and they just have a four-foot fence, and it's uh, it's uh, it's a nice park. Okay, let's revisit this. Okay. It's not going to be built this year anyway. So good, good to have on our plate. But and Steve, would you please speak to your two yes. residents there? You're missing one now. Did Bert speak? Be careful. Okay. So yeah, if we can have a quick meeting, you, me, and Margaret, then we'll uh, we'll get the sort of. Okay. Or is it you and I? I don't, I don't know. I think Margaret's on. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Thanks Steve. Steve. Okay.
Sandra, you're on. That's you, Sandra. That's you. It's all you, buddy. Just, just there. No. <laughs> and if you like, you're not going to say no. Yeah. Um, do you want to bring in Erica? Did everybody meet Erica? No. Yes. Maybe we should bring her in, Sandra, during your report, because it's in your report. <laughs> Tell her she's on the hot seat. When she she's on camera. camera. Yeah. I met her one day when I was in signing the checks. I thought when I saw this, Jim, you were going to put them up again. She said, what company made those guns? <laughs> it does look like a gun rack. <laughs> More like fishing rods. Yeah. Jake cast fishing rods. No. We turn it upside down. So everybody, this is Sandra's. I'll let Sandra introduce you. Oh, sorry. So this is Erica Rice. Hi, Erica. Hi, Erica. Hi, Erica. Hi, Erica. Hi, Erica. Hi, Erica. Welcome to Hello, our How are you? Easy yeah. on the nester. Yeah. <laughs> you crushed very nice to meet everybody. Thanks, Thanks Erica. Erica. Thank you. Excellent addition to the team. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, do you have any questions for me? Um, I just I wanted to explain to this council what the alternative means was just so that they could sort of grasp where I'm coming from. Oh, okay, sure, yep. All right, so in um, 2015, when I was going through chemotherapy, council was kind enough to pass a bylaw allowing me to attend meetings via phone or, or Skype or FaceTime, alternate means. Um, that bylaw actually was used uh, for the change in the provincial rulings that we can attend by alternative means which is kind of neat that bylaw has expired it also only talked about me um the, i'm sorry about the mayor's position so when sandra asked me last week if we wanted to extend this bylaw i think it's prudent to include all members of council this is not so you can go to mexico for two months and phone in this is for you know real illness there are some rules um if you phone in you cannot vote uh, and you do not count as quorum, correct? Actually, I think it does say that. That you count as quorum? I'd have to read, have to read I it. I count as quorum, but you can't. But you can't vote, vote. Yeah. okay. Um, so I just thought that this was something, um, it was a very useful, actually I only used it once, but it was a useful tool for that particular meeting. Um, and I think that it should apply to all of council. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I you never know when you get the tip. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's good? Yep. Okay. I'll bring you back to the next meeting. Then. Perfect. Thanks, nice. Sandra. Thanks, Sandra. Um, so we're wondering about closing our office on Friday, December the 27th, yep. and we would all use a holiday. Yep. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Um, and then normally, council grants us permission to go home early on Christmas Eve and New Year's. No. No, no. That is oh, crazy. my God. No, 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 no. no. You really? give her an inch, she takes oh, a mile. Oh, man. And no extra coal, no extra coal for the heat either. We're going to turn it down. But just think, you might bring in a bottle of wine. Being glad to see them go over. <laughs> <laughs> and the McCray Cup tender for the accessible washer. Um, I would say if it's coming in on Friday, it's up to you to award. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fingers crossed. Did we get any tenders? One. Okay. That's good. Okay. Better, better than none. Better than none. Perfect. <laughs> um, the other thing is with Sandra, um, there is a procurement bylaw, like for tendering and putting out quotes and what Sandra can approve and what has to come to council. Um, I've asked her to clean up that bylaw as well. It hasn't been done in. It was 2005. Yeah. 14 years. Ren was like 12. <laughs> so it's not. Well, the same time as the garbage thing has to be That's right. Exactly. In the gar exactly. Yeah. And I like the blue stickers. I think that just okay. do away. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It'll be easier for just red stickers. Yeah. Okay. Especially if you're coming to the end of your, of your stash, right? Yeah. Yeah. It may go on. Like, it'll depend. 
calls from the Algonquin was nothing serious about the fourth shoot, no serious concern. No. Okay. okay, good, good. Nothing held can be held up. We want your road bill. We're gonna need votes for the next election. <laughs> <laughs> Tim's going to be recusing all day long. <laughs> You'll be sitting back there with us. <laughs> you don't mind, day after. <laughs> oh, seat there. So you get the seat warm. Does anybody have any comments on my lettering building? Okay, okay, this is. I'm. I'm going to tell you guys what I said to her the other day. I'm just going to. I'm not going to lie. For nine hundred and fifty dollars, I was like. Just do it. Yeah. Could you include Sanders place or something? <laughs> <laughs> In parenthesis. I think it's amazing. Just for stuff like that, Sandra, that makes total sense when people cannot find our municipal office. It's, yeah. Actually, when you sent it to me, I drove by. I'm like, oh, we actually don't have that there. <laughs> I, was, I was like, what's the point of this Google Maps, Sandra? I didn't understand it. And I drove up and I was like, oh, okay, we don't even have the... Identity Send that picture in the next newsletter and everybody will know. I know. Yeah. Hey, you don't even have Check to do yeah. The other thing is it still says Eganville Fire Hall. I'm not sure. That may be something to think about in the future that it's the Bonashir Valley Fire just Department. Take part off. Just, put, just put fire department. Just fire, fire hall. Fire hall. Yeah. Go BVT or something. BVFD? No, no. BVT, yeah. BVT fire? Yeah. When, when do we need when they start falling apart and breaking. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I didn't mean replace yeah. perfectly good lettering. All right, perfect. But that, yeah. So, yes, there are some people that really cannot find this building. So I thought it was brilliant. They're not reading that, that sideways sign. No. It's too, I think it's too, maybe too dark. I'm not sure. Yeah. Anyway, good work, Sandra. Okay. <clears throat> you want to take a break before we go on with correspondence, or sure? Or, 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 or. We're, back on, we're back on schedule. We're, we're, we're really on schedule. Okay. I just want every.
Congrats. Yeah. That was a stressful weekend. So if we're good to go yeah. on correspondence, eh? Yeah. Managed just repairs and housing. Anyone that want to discuss that at the honor? Nope. Councilor Bruin and Linda Raglan, firearms. I was glad to see that. Yeah, mm -hmm. we've already done that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. I, I feel like it got worse last week. Like that they're not backing down. Well, it actually inflamed the situation. I think it did too. So it, it, it's too bad because um, for 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 a little while I thought there was going to be some sober thought put into the so situation, no. and it it actually went totally totally sideways. So. Um, <coughs> As we know, I give a lot of facts and information when we put this forward. Mm -hmm. um, now, now instead of the handgun ban, they're kind of walking away from the handgun ban. And actually, they're, they're going to all semi-automatic rifles yeah. is what they're, they're trying to do. And they're gonna download it onto the municipalities to be okay. the bad guy. And it does directly correlate with what we're going to be doing, but, um, a lot, it was a lot of misstatements I seen in the statement that was released last week. Um, I don't even know if it's worthwhile. Uh, so, um, I don't want to dump Bill Blair in it, but I'm going to. Uh, some of the statements that he made last week, uh, it just can't happen. Putting this on the municipalities is it's ridiculous, quite frankly. So now you're telling me that I can have an automatic weapon in or semi-auto in Bonnershire Valley, but I can't in North Elgin or Wilberforce. I think but I can I can in Brudenell Linduck and Raglan, but I can't in Laurentian Valley. But I think it comes back to the days and I think it's all solved or pretty well resolved now, where you you're allowed to hunt Sundays in Bonnershire Valley, but you weren't allowed to hunt Sunday in North Elgin. Yeah, but I, I, I really I, I really don't think that the leader of that party has any idea when he's talking about when he said and i'll quote that nobody needs a semi-automatic to fire that many rounds per second at a deer and no hunters use it he has no idea of what a semi-automatic firearm is he needs a fully automatic they have no clue and they're 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 setting up legislation I, I really, I, I don't know if Bill Blair has any idea how, what firearms are. He uh, should have. Just because, uh, no, I, I mean, I can't. As they can't, if they, they, yeah, but they, they, they have to be totally heads in the ground like a bunch of ostriches if they're coming out with statements well, like that. If you guys want, we can send another resolution, but I think we've already done our job. We have. I, I'm mm -hmm. glad to see that Brudnell's backing us on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For so, sure. Yeah, so and like, uh, that, that was great to see, and there's some common sense out there on the other end and it's uh eight and according to global news they released the figures last week it's an 8.9 billion dollar legal industry in this yeah. country and if the same person who's talking about saving a few jobs on the snc front what about the, what about the jobs and, and the and livelihoods of all the people that do this legally in this country and that is the word of the day legally you know legally yeah. legally you know the 24-hour background check every day CPIC, yep. you know and and that that, that and that's just a fear-mongering yeah that concern it is john of Osega beach municipal amalgamation where's that rumor mill starting again i think that this came out of um the uh ruling last week or the week before that the Ontario Supreme Court said that it was constitutional that the province reduced Toronto to 25. I think that's why this stirred back up. That's the only reason I could see it. Mm -hmm. uh, Brood, Natalie, and Dr. Raglan jumped on it as well. Town of Rent for funding cuts, so we, we already did that. We we already did, that. did I tell everybody that Doug Downey actually came and met with Amy Schulten? Or was that a county? Um, yeah, oh, county. okay. So um, the attorney general 
actually came to Renfrew after the AMO conference and met with Amy Shulton, who came and presented to us. He, he wasn't aware of a lot of things Amy enlightened him on. He was going to give her half an hour. He was there for almost two hours. So I'm, I'm hopeful that this will be rectified. Canadian Legion for Yes. Yep. Parade. Always. That's a, a no-brainer. Dog Park with Delta. Larder Lake electronic delegations. I, I mean, how thin budget are you? You can't send someone to a, to a <laughs> Roma meeting. Or Business is done in person with a handshake generally, and it's always worked. And I agree. You can have pre like talks beforehand, but I think you, you need to have the in person. You know, I also will say I I do a lot of conference calls, and and I know that I just sort of defended our idea that we could be here first by alternate means, but. Sometimes on the phone, it gets confusing, uh, confusing as to who is speaking and who's stating what. And, you know, did you agree with that? Did you not? So I, I'm not sure about this. The primary I, interaction should always be face to face. Yeah. And the other thing, probably your conference calls, you know what the face on the other line looks like. Yes, generally. I and do. this yeah. way you wouldn't. Exactly. Yeah. Tell me a rent for update. All right. So um, I attended my... Last conference as the warden of the county of Renfrew. Yes, you guys are getting me back almost full time. Not quite, almost. Yes, is this the time for the applause? Yeah. No. Oh, <laughs> yeah. okay. It was kind of, you know, it was bittersweet. It really was. It was I don't know that you're coming back full time. It's yeah. really oh, that's very nice. Um, so I did, I did go to a couple of um, interesting plenaries. One of them was on short term accommodation tax. Uh, Prince Edward County has installed something that's very interesting. Absolutely not something that I think that we can take on. Um, very expensive, you know, full-time bylaw, full-time fire chief, full-time fire prevention officer, uh, a lot of uh, regulations and rules. Um, and uh, it, they've, they've had some, some problems with noise, garbage, taxation, fire insurance, uh, zoning, where should the short terms be? It's it's quite convoluted, but um, certainly a lot of the Renfrew County delegations left that particular session saying, okay, we're not in the Prince Edward County, um, you know, $3,000 a week rentals a week. So we're not there yet. All right. Then I went to an amazing, amazing plenary on cannabis, um, specifically on medical marijuana, um, what we are in charge of, uh, recreational jurisdiction is to the province, not to Health Canada. Uh, municipal, we are under the building code, fire code, and zoning, which I thought was very good because I think that wherever one of these might go in the future, our residents have the right to speak to it. Uh, we were told cannabis is not going away. Uh, in fact, cannabis is here to stay. Uh, we have to use diligence and risk assessment. Uh, the benefits effect, um, effect on our um, on our residents op are the operators reputable? Um, you know, they they gave us a, a whole lot of information. What I was going to do was when it uh, when it got to the OEMC website, I was going to print it out for you. Um, so what we were told by Mr. Delaney and by Delcan is absolutely dead on uh, what they what they require. There are six licenses available, cultivation, processing, sale for medical purposes, analytic testing, research, drug license for therapeutic claims, and import, export, and transport. So I thought that those were very, very, very interesting notes, um, but I will get you everything. Um, the site plan control that we were told about where they get inspected every month, absolutely true. Um, the regulations around security um, are very stringent. Uh, Health Canada can and will shut you down on a, on a first time infraction. So they're taking this very seriously. Um, so what I, oh, and um, they cannot operate in retail except physically attached, attached to the production. So somebody cannot start a, grow, a legal marijuana, um, medical marijuana grow up in Foynout and have a store in Eganville. Health Canada doesn't allow that. 
Um, they can't participate in the lotteries to open the retail stores. I found that very interesting. Um, but their resource is Health Canada, the Cannabis Licensing Guide. So I encourage everybody to bone up because I'm assuming that in the next few weeks we'll hear something from these two gentlemen about potentially rezoning the building in Foymount. Um, yeah, it was very, very, very interesting. On a Renfrew County note, I've got County Council tomorrow, so I'll have more for you at our next meeting. And I think that's that's all. Uh, I did, again, have about 30 meetings in September. So again, it'll be sort of nice to, You're to, be, miss that. Thanks, to be a county. Oh, you know what? I was, I was asked, how are you gonna feel to be the ex-warden? And I, I'm ready. I, I really am. I think um, it's it's been three years and I'm ready to be a county councillor and a, and a mayor here and and uh, and sort of regroup. But it's been a great experience. It's been an amazing experience. And I'll, I'll continue to bring you Renfrew County updates, just not as the board. No, no, we don't want any more of those 60 page documents. No, 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 I promise. I promise. <laughs> no, no, it, no, 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 it really has been the experience of a lifetime. <laughs> you, 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 you missed that one. You used to get these things about that thick. Mm. My, our report for last county council was 526 pages. Oh, so we've got ups in the 60 page. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> It's a lot of reading. December Christmas hours. We just solved that one already. Yep. Won't you buy the library board representative? I think we have to go into close for that. No, we, do we have we're just a point? Oh, in the library, I did send you the recommendation. Yes. Okay. We just um, have to appoint. We can just do it. Yeah. All right. So we have three candidates. And they are like the this one. And they're recommending. The other one belongs to the friends of the library, and the one with. The other one that doesn't belong to Friends of the Library, we're going to recommend that she joins Friends of the Library. <laughs> so it was um, Francis? Francis, yeah. yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. She's already worked with the uh, authors. She has. Yes. Yeah. Um, Francis, what's her last name? O'Malley. O'Malley. Oh, she lives near Cornock. Okay, then. So, do we need a resolution? Yes. Do we need a resolution to appoint Francis? Yes, yeah. Perfect. Good show. Yeah. Okay, done. Community improvement plan, signage application, Greg Kelly. Yeah. Did, did you get the one from Barack? Oh, that's a shame. I was hoping to approve that one at the same time. No. Dana, can we, can we file for half of our $950? Uh, Municipal office? I already asked. Did you? <laughs> yes. That's why I did, did it. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. But there should be enough money in there if uh, Subway wants. Okay. The, I, I'm really yeah, happy. Getting soon. We're going to get skinny? Yes. Okay. I'm, a little tight there, but I'm glad people are using it. Yep. Oh, it's there to be used. I need right. some letters in my truck. So if you <laughs> can the new there truck. is a resolution yeah. of <laughs> nice <Yes>. try. <laughs> Excellent. Media. So right now the dog park at Tenley scheduled will be side. Uh, the Jews. Is that correct? No. no. We tabled it. Table it. Okay. What is the area? What's the square footage of that area that goes there? Ballpark. We said 100 by 300 feet. Yeah, right? I think it's 150 by 300. No. 100. 100? That's it for me, thanks. Okay, Bruce McIntyre. Thank you. As a just a, a side note, as a person who uses a dog park every day in Renfrew, I recommend you make it long because dogs like to run. Your feet is long. And as far as beautification goes, they won't three times a year, that's your beautification. Okay. And I wouldn't worry about it. Bruce, how how uh, wide is the one in Renfrew? Oh, it's it's about two football fields. I say the whole area is about a football field. I would say ballpark. I'm giving you a guess. It's wow, huge. it's huge. It's maybe not. I mean, it's big, but my dog, the dogs run full out from one end to the other. It takes about. Uh, you're going fast about 25 to 30 seconds to run the entire length of the park. It's huge. Dogs are to run fast and long. That's the biggest 
recommendation I made to you. I'd say the biggest thing is poop. Um, it's self-policed. Um, uh, interesting. Will be, if someone doesn't pick up their poop, they know pretty quickly, let them know immediately. Mm -hmm. And make sure you have lots of poop bags on hand. Yep. Um, it's a lot cheaper. Never have, and if there's any possible way to get water into the park, that's one thing that we don't have in Renfrew. If you bring your own water, I know it's a pain in the arse. Uh, there's no hookup out there. But um, I go through, on a, every night I'll go through about uh, a gallon of water with my dog. There's other dogs that are there. We bring our own bowls. And uh, in the summer, if it's hot, it will not be used. Uh, just don't worry about purification July and August because it's too hot for dogs. Very rarely is it used. Even at nighttime, it's not used in the summertime. Now it's, it's cooler than September. On average, you'll see maximum five to ten dogs there. That, that's the peak. Ten dogs in post post supper time. Okay. Thanks for the intel. I yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. For now, I think that we need to revisit this. Um, if we look at the property across from the Cray Park. They have access to the river. All yes. The water. Well, and the I want to have a conversation with them to see what their commitment level is for everything. Sounds good. Unless yeah. you're like my dog, who only drink well water. My dog just the bottle. Doesn't use a bowl. <laughs> they won't drink rain water, lake water. They only drink well water. <laughs> That's true. Mm -hmm. Anyway, do we have, do we still have to go into a, a closed session, or have we all that off the panel? Yeah. Do we? Uh, you want to suspend us and do the EGC meeting? Why don't we do closed and then we can do EGC? Okay, whatever. Just short county meetings, right? Or do it. Yeah. Do ECG first or not? We have Mark closed too, so we'll check. Oh, well, then let's do this. Mark's here. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So you need a motion to go into closed. Okay. I'll get you. I'm, I, yeah, I'm sorry. Mark there? Mark is here. Yeah, let's do this. I just have two minutes outside with that. For sure. the of course you can. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah. It's going to cost you, but you can. Put it on the top, Mr. Murph. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're still recording, Sandra. Okay. Yeah. Do you want this off, Mr. I'm going to shut it off right here. Yeah.